Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to check out another Beast of the Mesozoic figure. However, we are jumping back in time a little bit because we're going to look at the Raptor series. It's been a while since I actually had a Raptor figure up for review, and I actually do have quite a few of them here that I've acquired, you know, recently, and uh, it's some stuff that I did want to review, and I've been holding off on opening them until I did review it. So we're going to go ahead and start with one of them today. And today we have the, and I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce the name name of this one, the Sagan Mangus, or I've heard of it being pronounced as Sargon, and I'm not sure exactly which variation of the pronunciation is correct, so if anybody knows for sure, definitely let me know in the comments section, because this is a species I am not very familiar with, in fact, I've really never read up on it at all, and uh, it's a very uncommon dinosaur to see in figure form, which is one of the many Benefits of the Beasts of the Mesozoic line, because they give us plenty of very obscure species, one of which, again, we're taking a look at today. You can see that the box art looks fantastic, as it always does, and we, of course, have the window area here showing the figure off a little bit, but the glare from the lights is just absolutely annihilating it, so it's a little hard to actually see it at this point. And then here on the back, you can get a good idea as far as the checklist when it comes to all of the different raptors that are released, not even all of them, actually but a good bit of them there are even more than what you see here which is pretty impressive but you also have another shot here of the art for the Sagan and again the information down here on basically the creature itself and all of that fun stuff so really really cool absolutely gorgeous art so let's pop this box open and check this beautiful figure out right now so we've got ourselves the base here for the figure still in the wrapping but looking quite nice there is also actually some extra feet here that you can see actually not even extra feet but extra toes that you can alternate with the figure itself and here is the figure itself and it looks absolutely gorgeous definitely quite the looker and a very obscure species that i definitely did not have the pleasure of adding to my collection previously so the beasts of the mesozoic as per usual takes care of that problem by giving me one but uh i feel like the raptor series is honestly like underrated like it's overlooked because there's so many people nowadays and you know rightfully so that are excited about the ceratopsian series and the tyrannosaur series but sometimes we forget just how amazing the raptor series itself is and how many extremely extremely cool figures we had in that line and uh I'm always just like almost at a loss for words when I get a new Raptor and you know I actually have a moment to take it out and take a look over the figure and really have a chance to appreciate how good the Raptor series is. This thing is again just absolutely phenomenal and overloaded with paint application but it 100% looks like it could be the color of the animal and of course the figures can stand without the base but you usually have to use the feathers there on the arms to kind of position it up because the figures themselves I don't know if it would stand actually let's give it a shot I have never had much luck doing this when it comes to trying to make one of the raptor series figures stand but the fact that it almost seemed like it was balancing there made me have some slight hope that it were possible yeah I don't know maybe not I've never been able to get one to stand entirely on its own without the use of the feathers on the arms but at the same time, like, it's still okay. Like, it looks really good with the feathers still touching and everything and it's standing. But the best way, of course, to stand it up and position it would be with the base itself. But this figure is, again, really nice looking. So let's jump to a closer look at it, as always, right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see some beautiful texturing to the skin. Really nice texturing. And you can also see some... Very nice paintwork to the figure, super smooth transitions as we have various yellowish tones as well as brown tones. I can also see kind of like a dark wash that's been applied. The snout has that little area of black, but the lower jaw also has a little variation of brown and black right there. And again, as far as the detailing goes, that is off the charts. It is beautiful. You can see the eyes are painted with kind of like a reddish brown and given a nice big black pupil. They also sport a nice gloss coat so they shine quite realistically. The jaw articulates. Of course, the large majority of the figure articulates, but you can see a nice purplish tone there for the inside of the mouth of the Sagan. And you can also see the teeth are sculpted really nicely, very nicely painted. I don't ever recall sloppiness really with any of my beasts of the mesozoic figures so 
I always expect the inside of the mouth and everything where you have a lot of room for error to look beautiful and that's exactly the case with this version here with this figure. I think the tongue's articulated on these as well. Yep, yeah, so absolutely you can see the tongue articulates. Something I always forgot about when it came to the Raptor series was that the tongue's articulated as well, but you can definitely see again the tongue articulates very nicely on this figure. We close the jaw, closes nicely. As we start to lead back here into the top of the head, you start to see some nice feathering picking up. You also see a white tone taking over that area for the feathers. And you can also see there's a nice dark wash applied to it, so it highlights all of those feathers very nicely. Kind of scruffy looking feathers. As we lead down here into the neck, you can see, again, really scruffy feathers as you move down. But it continues to have that color scheme, that coloration of the white tone with the dark wash and there's also like some variation of browns in there that I'm picking up on as you lead down a little bit further you start to have a little bit more kind of uh, I guess you could say calm feathering but we continue to have a brownish tone but now we have kind of like a white that dry brushes over it rather than the large majority of it being white and uh, you can see that looks very nice also a darker shade of brown here for the underside there leading in the throat as you lead back a little bit further you continue to see more really nice feather detail again slightly switching it up as far as the coloration goes as we have kind of like a light brown almost like a yellowish brown and then more variation of color as you move back with kind of like some variation of browns as well as some white dry brushing moving down here into the arm you again have more really nice feather detail but you again have more really nice alternate coloration as you have variations of browns and everything here as well as some kind of gray dry brushing moving down here a little bit further our figure starts to display some of that really nice plumage leading out into the arm and again lots of variation of color and I like how we start with lighter tones and then transition further and further out into those feathers and we get really nice dark tones as we lead out to the tips of the feathers and the actual detailing within the feathers is phenomenal look at how beautiful that is taking a moment to go back and look at some of these raptor series figures has me so hyped for the upcoming utah raptor that they are releasing but you can also see again that the detailing here of the hand looks nice we go back to that yellowish tone like we saw on the face the face actually has like yellows and browns we see more of just yellows here but when you turn it around you can see more of those brownish tones applied with a really nice dry brushing as well the nails are painted with a nice blackish tone they're given a nice gloss coat the eye of course has a nice gloss coat and so does the inside of the mouth in case I happen to have forgotten to mention that but as we move back here you start to see lots of variations of browns here in the stomach region again really smooth transitioning the beasts of the Mesozoic always has incredible paintwork you also have some darker kind of grays down here on the underside even the undersides of the arms leading down here throughout the feathering and everything you can see we have that darker gray and then some nice light dry brushing here really highlighting the feather detail on the underside of the arms but actually you can get a really good idea of what the hand looks like from here as well on the opposing side but as you move up here, you again have some more of that whitish tone running along the front of the thigh. Leading back, we transition back to a few variations of browns. And we have kind of like this little area of almost some more scruffy feathering, but it quickly diminishes back down to kind of like some finer feathering as you lead down into the leg and then leading down into the foot sculpt we again head back to that yellowish tone but you can see how beautiful the sculpting and detailing is of the foot and toes and also again we have that yellowish tone but nicely dry brushed over with that brownish tone so we continue to have the same appearance to the skin texture kind of like what we had seen on the face more nicely painted nails including again our classic raptor sickle claw right there which you can see articulates of course the toes articulate they also pop off to put the opposing toes that we had already taken a look at on but you can also see that you can articulate the toe right here with the sickle claw quite nicely and we do have dew claws as well but as you lead back up here again you can see more really nice feather detail here to the underside but also some more variation of color again with variations of grays and then we lead out here on the top of the tail you've got a little bit more of that kind of whitish dry brushing as well as lots of variations of browns lighter and darker variations as you move out toward the tip of the tail we do darken to a black we also have kind of like some bluish sort of stripes here as we lead out 
out toward the tail feathers, which also gives just a little hint of flashiness out there on the tip of the tail. And the plumage there on the tail looks fantastic, both paintwork wise and sculpt work wise, really, really highly detailed. And you can see that the underside has kind of like a different appearance to it as far as the way the feather detail is portrayed, which looks really good again. The detailing is phenomenal on this figure everywhere. Of course, you're not really going to see too much difference over here on the initial side because it's a fully articulated figure and, you know, it's up to you to really display it and position it. So you're not going to see much difference over here compared to what we had seen on the initial side. But it looks just as beautiful over here as it did on the initial side. And then we've got our base and the base as well has a really nice earthy area Really nice sculpting and detailing to the earthy area. You can see some vegetation kind of laying here and there on there. Lots of really nice variation of color as well, as we have all sorts of different tones of color here on the base. You also have a little rocky formation over here with a little bit more vegetation next to it. You know, very nicely sculpted, nicely painted. So as a whole, the entire thing looks beautiful. It's pretty much like your classic Raptor series base, the type of bases that all of them have had. Really nicely replicating the terrain where we would find this species. And David Silva, again, always does a killer job on the extras when it comes to the beasts of the Mesozoic. And you can yet again see that the base for the Sagan looks beautiful as well. And then, of course, as far as the base goes, you have this kind of little plastic clear stand. You have two different attachments for it, so you can decide which way you would like to hold your Raptor on the base. You can see two different styles as far as that goes. We'll go ahead and go with this one. So basically what you need to do is then take your little stand here. You just pop that in. And then you also have a little hole here in the center that you pop that in. And then you have the stand sitting on there very nicely so you can apply your raptor. Now as far as the articulation goes of our raptor, again we already saw that we have the articulated jaw. We also saw that we have articulation in the tongue. But as you move back here into the neck, you've got a little spot of articulation right here, here, and here. So you have the ability to kind of very nicely and very smoothly move the neck, <laughs> the jaw a little crooked there, but move the neck of your dinosaur and it moves very nicely in all sorts of different positions for you to articulate it however you would like as you move back you also have a spot of articulation right here as well as the midsection it is a little stiff right now because this is again right fresh out of the package i haven't really messed with it or anything quite yet so i haven't had the opportunity to kind of loosen up the joints or anything but again here and here you also have the articulation right there in the shoulder as well as the elbow which it's kind of moving there there we go we've got the elbow and then you've also got the wrist articulation so some very nice articulation in the arms and you can also bring the arms out you know to the side here so that you can get a very cool visual of your raptor and uh you know with the arms out to the side you also have the articulation in the hips as well as the knee which is definitely stiff. Yep, definitely very, very stiff. I have not moved that either. And then you've got a spot here and here. There we go. So again, right there, right there. And then also the toes. And then again, the toe right here. So tons of articulation on these raptors. And then as you move out, you've got another spot right here and then another spot right here. And that ends the articulated joints, but you also have a wire tail that can you know further give you more articulated possibilities for your raptor so to say this is an articulated figure would be putting it mildly again super super articulated and then of course you basically just need to position it here on the base have that little area hold it up i think the feathers might be helping a little bit right now uh, maybe not regardless you can get all sorts of really cool positions and everything as far as your raptor goes and the way you can display it but we're going to get a size for the Sagan for a length you are looking at about a little shy of 12 and a half a little bit over I would say 12 and a quarter inches or around 31 and a half closing in on 32 centimeters currently the highest point would be the tail if I can get this plastic bag out of the way so for a height to the top of the tail it's just shy of six inches or around 15 centimeters and then for the head just shy of four inches or 10 centimeters now of course the height and everything would really depend on you and how 
high up you want your raptor because again being a fully articulated fully posable raptor it's on you as far as where you want to position it and again give the height but for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line next to our beasts of the mesozoic sagan and you can definitely see it sports a pretty good size to it as a whole these raptor series figures always have very nice sizes to them you know you have some smaller ones that kind of have like accessory packs and stuff and you get some pretty cool smaller species but the majority of the figures especially in the one sixth scale line you can see again sport a very very nice size for sure and to show you a little bit more evidence as far as the size goes if you're fairly new to the beasts of the mesozoic maybe you haven't you know dabbled into the raptor series yet one of the more popular ceratopsians for the beasts of the mesozoic was the zuni ceratops so here's what we've got as far as a size next to the zuni ceratops for the sagan and you could definitely see again it sports a pretty good size very impressive as far as the size goes being that they are one sixth scale you would definitely expect them to be quite large and we can see that is for sure the case next to the zuni ceratops and then our randoms come back for another appearance as we have the Schleich Diabloceratops, the Safari LTD Tyrannus, and the Collect Day Deluxe Dimetrodon next to our Sagan here. And you can definitely see, again, it's much larger than every figure that we have here next to it but also again just generally the fact that it sports an impressive size as a whole so this very cool beast of the mesozoic raptor series sagan figure is fantastic as all of the raptor series figures always are and i'm getting closer and closer to at least owning all of the species to this line but i will never probably be able to have the opportunity to own every figure from the line because i when the Beasts of the Mesozoic line had just come out, I was collecting dinosaurs, but not to the point that I am now. Like, I was really interested in dinosaurs, but I was a little more selective on what I purchased, and I wasn't too sure on the line. And I also wasn't a huge fan, actually, back then of articulated dinosaurs. Like, I saw this, and I'm like, oh, it looks pretty cool, but I'm not too sure how into it I am. Until I, of course, made my first purchase, and I've been in love with them ever since. But when I first purchased them, I had only ordered like three Raptors just to kind of get an idea as far as, you know, how nice they would be in person. So ever since then, and uh, since I began heavily collecting dinosaurs, I've been kind of trying to play catch up and catch up with all the figures that I missed back then. And we're getting there slowly, but there are still a lot that I need to get my hands on when it comes to the Raptor series, unfortunately. And there were also like some exclusives like we usually have with the Beasts of the Mesozoic, like specifically i think there was an alternate coloration for the velociraptor that is very hard to find now that i'll probably never have the chance to get but at least again i'm having the opportunity to enter more and more of these raptors in my collection as time goes on and this again is another beautiful species really quite obscure and one that i've never seen a figure of outside of the beasts of the mesozoic version and as always david does a phenomenal job on the sculpt and paint job of the figure as well as the base the sculpt is incredibly highly detailed as they always are when it comes to the raptor series really crisp really nice detail as a whole just a gorgeous sculpt really nicely replicating the sagan again and giving us the opportunity to own one in action figure form but again the sculpting and detailing isn't the only impressive aspect to the figure because the paintwork is super nice looking on this one really quite lifelike and as always tons of tones of color included on this one lots of different variations of like whites grays browns all sorts of color that gives this thing an extremely realistic and lifelike look and they've done a good job of highlighting all of the detail throughout with various dry brushing techniques and washes and stuff that they always do which i feel like they get even better at nowadays but they were still amazing at it back when the raptor series had come out and of course one of the most fun aspects of this figure of this release is the articulation and this is super super articulated like the raptor series is even more articulated than what you get on the tyrannosaur series or the ceratopsian series i feel like uh, again, the articulation was at its max for the Raptor series, and you can see that throughout the entire figure. You have tons of possibilities as far as display options and poses that you can pull off for your figure, which is always an incredibly fun aspect to any Beasts of the Mesozoic release. And then you have a nice base, again, to give you that nice visual of the dinosaur, potentially in its natural habitat. And you also have that kind of backdrop that they include on the inside of the packaging to give you the 
you know, area, again, the terrain where the dinosaur would live to really help out with a nice display. But as a whole, this is another fantastic release, one that I very much so recommend picking up. So if you are interested, I will include a link in the description to where I purchased mine on the Beasts of the Mesozoic website. So make sure you check that link, go grab yourself this gorgeous Sagan figure, and like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.